why do you think depression rates and I think suicide too, if I, if I remember correctly, are higher today are just in our times in the past, I guess, 10 years, it's been increasing. Why do you think that is other than the coronavirus? Cause I mean, that's obviously like a major, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about even before the coronavirus, like they were saying that depression and suicide is like higher. I mean, I think what, uh, with the coronavirus did, which is an example of, of why there's an increase in depression is I think partly of what we were talking about yesterday, the loneliness aspect of uh, everyone being online and not really being physically in places, you know, that, that can be harmful because who do you communicate with? Right. Right. Who, who, yeah. who do you talk to? Well, like what? And so, so that in itself, you know, I think, since we are mammals, social beings, we are meant to be around people. And so if we are isolated, you know, let's say our parents work all the time. We never see them. Uh, me, I just go to school and, you know, they, they're bullying me at school and somebody ends up telling me, you know, you're not valuable. You're not worth it. You're a piece of trash, blah, blah, blah. You come back home and you're by yourself. Who do you cry to? Who do you, who do you have as a support? And so if you don't have anyone, you know, that can lead to, to a serious issue where, you know, people can say, well, what is my life worth? You know, it's right. worth nothing. So yeah. why, why do I exist in the first place? Loneliness can literally make someone question who they are. Like, like after a certain period of time, like they just start questioning who they are. They feel disconnected from society and from other people. And it gets to a point to where they don't, they don't, their identity starts disappearing. Because where do we get our identity from? We get our identity from other people. We get our yeah. identity from other people giving us feedback about ourselves and our interactions with other people. We've always uh, praised our kids and, and said, had 11, you know, place trophies and, and that sort of thing where kids are always hearing, you're good, you're good, you're awesome, you're beautiful and, and this and that. And then when they get confronted by society, they say, oh, well, your work is actually not that great you you're not picking after yourself then kids are complaining kids are are having a hard time dealing with that because they've always been told that they're amazing the whole kind of like giving a child an award for everything like participation trophies and stuff that's a new thing that's not something that's been done that's like new for our generation kind of if you're always uh, i guess praised or or given an award for everything then when you enter the real world it's going to be a lot harder to adapt the more unrealistic your expectations are the more you're going to be disappointed you know so it's it's healthier to have more realistic expectations you know not to beat yourself up because you can still have unrealistic expectations if you're hating yourself all the time and saying you can't do anything that's still unrealistic but it's also unrealistic to say that you can always win every time or never be shut down never rejected never this or that Mm -hmm. you got to kind of find a place in the middle you know that kind of makes uh i guess sense you know and well, yeah. on the cyberbullying thing, there's one thing I wanted to say is it's very unfortunate because some cyberbullying has led, like there's been students that were targeted at schools uh, and have committed suicide because of uh, cyberbullying. So that stuff is real. I think lies and, and, and things can get exposed faster and easier through social media. Somebody tweets about it. Somebody posts about it. Um, and then all, all of a sudden, five, 500 people know about it. Instead yeah. that like before, you know, maybe a few people spread it and, and they talk to Sally and Sally talked to Mark and Mark now knows. And now there's 20 people involved, but now social media, everyone's involved. It just accelerates the speed of people knowing about something. I think that's essentially what social media does. It just yeah. accelerates the speed of people knowing about a certain aspect of things. Right. Before yeah. we had newspaper and even before that, news would car- be carried from one place to another through a message that a horse uh, man was was taking to one city to the other and or through word of mouth. And Going on a philosophical angle on this, um, with existentialism thought, do you think that people are more depressed now and because they feel like, because our society has moved uh, more towards, uh, I guess, a materialistic, maybe atheistic worldview that meaning isn't divine, that we're all just here randomly and there's no meaning to the universe and there's no meaning to our lives. And 
going uh, just adding to the little bit existentialism philosophy believes nihilism believes that we create i think it's nihilism we that we <clears throat> create our own meaning in our own lives so it's not like it's completely hopeless but at the same time it's basically saying that there's no universal meaning we just make up our own meaning in our mind it's not really real it's just an illusion i guess do you think maybe that yeah part? it but you know even if you take that uh nihilistic perspective you know so why is that why is it that people who tend to have a belief or of something you know tend to be healthier going back to the philosophical aspect yeah i mean i i do think that the fact that you know we are turning into a more objective and more you know trying to just try to figure out everything by science and and that sort of thing that's the in itself the the identity crisis too because you know people are trying to become you know is this is just the life that we're living you know there's no afterlife it's just this and that can lead to to some depression in itself because you know if there's no hope that that's essentially what depression is no hope there's no meaning there's no reason to live yeah and hopelessness so, leads to suicide yeah it's a huge predictor <laughs>